Welcome back to Studio C70 at the Committee of 70. I am Pat Christmas, Policy Director here. In a couple of weeks, polls are opening. We have a big local election coming up here in Philly. Uh, uh, mayor, city council, our row offices, also judicial elections, both local judicial candidates and state level judicial candidates, and then ballot questions. So long story short, there's a lot for voters to digest uh, and, and consider uh, on election day. It's Tuesday, November 5th. Um, and one of those offices is city council at large. So we have a number of the council candidates coming through the office today uh, to talk about their priorities and making their case for for office. Uh, we have Kendra Brooks with us this Hi. morning. Kendra, nice welcome. You. Yes, thank welcome. you. All righty, so we only got 15 minutes. We're gonna see how much ground we can cover. I'm gonna really pull back the lens here um, and, and just ask this overarching question. Do you think Philadelphia overall is on the right track or the wrong track? Not so much. Um, I think Philadelphia is on the right track. Okay. I think right now we're in an era where people want to see real change. Mm -hmm. You know, we're always talking about being the poorest, biggest city and folks are struggling. We need to find ways to change that narrative about Philly and the only way we can do it is making sure we're setting policies um, to help working people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, you are no stranger uh, to, to, to activism and community organizing and no stranger to politics since mm -hmm. what politics makes its way into those, into yes. those, into those realms. Um, so this is your first run for office. Yes. Uh, make make your case. You know why should you be a council at large member? Um, because I'm a fighter. I've been fighting around issues mm -hmm. for 20 years. Um, on a, in a way of like organizing people around mm -hmm. issues in a different way. Mm -hmm. And a lot of mm -hmm. folks don't see that as political, but mm -hmm. it is very much getting mm -hmm. people actively involved mm -hmm. um, in the process. Mm -hmm. And I come from an area where folks are probably like disenchanted mm -hmm. or have been mm -hmm. disenfranchised by the current voting systems mm -hmm. um, or just in elections in general. Mm -hmm. And me running for office have inspired folks mm -hmm. that have not voted ever in mm -hmm. life or mm -hmm. never had interest in getting involved in local politics. And we know that all politics Politics are local. Yeah, it all starts local. Absolutely. And so I'm running for city council because I believe in local politics mm -hmm. and I believe we have an opportunity mm -hmm. to get more people actively involved in what Philadelphia politics mm -hmm. looks like mm -hmm. um, and really to build a stronger democratic base for 2022. Yeah, well, I can't uh, I, I can't agree more the fact that, you know, no matter how relentlessly the headlines are coming out of D.C., uh, politics is still very much local and, and local government matters a great deal to people, people's lives. Um, could you talk a bit more about you know, the, the organizations, the groups, the, the issues that you, you worked on over the past you know, couple decades? Sure. Um, so I entered this work originally working with folks with disabilities. I mm -hmm. worked uh, 17 years for East of Seals of Southeastern Pennsylvania doing advocacy and activism for children and adults with disabilities. Mm -hmm. um, then I transitioned into doing work, more work around schools and education. Mm -hmm. I've worked on issues around increasing the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Mm -hmm. I worked on on, um, making a more diverse Federal Reserve Bank. So economic justice has been a part of my platform. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Worked on, uh, geez, uh, uh, climate justice issues yeah. around the power plant at um, Nicetown, as well as PES refinery, as well as the bomb trains back in, I think that was 2012 or 13 mm -hmm. that were coming through the city. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, what else? Uh, gun awesome. violence, yeah. criminal justice reform, you name it. Like mm -hmm. I've been in the forefront mm -hmm. um, of so many of these issues just because they have affected me or the people around me. Mm -hmm. um, and I have strong relations with, relationships with grassroots organizations around the city that mm -hmm. focus on all of these issues, whether it's urban farming mm -hmm. um, to, you know, evictions, foreclosures, mm -hmm. share sales. So mm -hmm. so many different um, pieces of work I have been a part of mm -hmm. um, fighting for uh, legislation and policy to support working people. Um, now it's just getting on the inside to help moving some of those policies forward. That's mm -hmm. how I look at this. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned just very briefly at the at the outset that uh, you know this is a very important local election for Philadelphia City Council. Obviously, there are all 17 seats are on the ballot. You know, City Council, as we all know, have uh, 10 districts, each represented by one member, and then we have seven at large um, for a, a, a you know great many years. Um, you know, seven of, those, of the, seven of those seats have been occupied by five Democrats. The other two, traditionally by Republicans. But you know, the law is not actually that it has to be both of the two major parties. The law actually says that um, that uh, is, is set up so that you know, the five seats are held by the majority party, and then the the, the two other seats would go to a non-majority party candidate. So that could be Republican, that could be third party, that could be a, an unaffiliated and an independent. Uh, candidates. So, you know, you are uh, going for one of those seven seats. Yes. Could you talk a little bit about why you think, you know, the, the political scene has shifted and, and, you know, what you've done that, um, that kind of like lines up given that, given that structure? I mean, this is not the first time we've had third party candidates yes. run for these seven seats. And it's really the two seats in particular held by Republicans, I mm -hmm. think, are, are being targeted. So what do you think has changed now in, in, the, in the, 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 the play? I think the powers of coalition, like we, okay. we have, um, 
we have elected some progressives here mm-hmm. in the city, mm-hmm. but just the power of coalition building, me being a part of the Alliance of a Just Philadelphia, mm-hmm. which was brought together 35 plus organizations around various issues around the city, mm-hmm. me being closely connected to uh, 215 People's Alliance, uh, Reclaim Philadelphia, Neighborhood Networks, 215 PA, uh, one PA, like those are folks that I've already worked with around the city. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what makes this election different is the mm-hmm. fact that um, me being a coalition builder mm-hmm. and have a historical mm-hmm. recognition for being a good coalition builder, which is um, added to the momentum that we see around this campaign, mm-hmm. uh, because people believe in a movement. This is not about me. Mm-hmm. It's about um, giving working class folks a seat at the table in a different way. Mm-hmm. Um, when we talk about issues, these are issues that all of these organizations have worked together to fight for. Even my relationship with uh, uh, Philadelphia Democratic Socialists and mm-hmm. DSA and all these different organizations coming to rally behind this campaign is what's different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't think we've ever seen this before. And I think that's what's really exciting. Even when we think about people that are going and canvassing for this campaign, mm-hmm. we have Philly for Warren and Philly for Bernie mm-hmm. still canvassing mm-hmm. for this campaign. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what it means to be a part of a coalition. We don't have to agree on everything, mm-hmm. but we do have to agree that fighting mm-hmm. for working people is important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so let's assume that you have a, you have a good November 5th mm-hmm. um, and then you, you enter uh, uh, office and city council as an at-large member. You know, I think it's, you know, we'll still have to see how the election day plays out and you know, there will certainly be a good number of Democrats uh, on council still, you know, uh, Republicans, third party members. We just we just have to see. But let's say that you do have a seat as an at large member. What will be your top legislative priority um, in your first you know, year or two? And then the 10 year tax abatement. OK. All right. And, and, why, and why, is, why is that top of the list? Because I've been fighting for this for mm-hmm. multiple years. Mm-hmm. We've been raising. I was with our city, our schools coalition. I was a mm-hmm. coordinator for that. And mm-hmm. we fought to make sure we have funding for schools and making sure we have a funding for housing. Mm-hmm. Um, usually, historically, we have been pitted against each other, mm-hmm. um, but we need each other. Children need quality homes, safe mm-hmm. places to live, but they also should be in um, you know, safe teaching environments as well. So ending mm-hmm. a 10-year tax abatement is something um, we saw as one of the ways to get more funding into our schools mm-hmm. um, that we can do locally. Mm-hmm. And it would benefit working people. Mm-hmm. It's, and so there's, you know, there's been some, uh, some good, good, good bit of discussion on council and, and amongst folks, close observers in the city already on this issue, and a, lot, a lot of activism around it. Um, you know, specifically, are you, are you going to, would you be advocating for eliminating the abatement uh, entirely or making an adjustment for it? Because there's been kind of discussion around both kind of routes. I have so been far. very clear that I'm for ending the 10-year tax abatement. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's let's take another tact on this. What is one thing that you would uh, you would never vote for that you would you would fight very much against if it came up in uh, in council? Um. Or I'll, I'll give you another uh, another something that's in place. Well, something that's in place now that you would try to peel back besides besides the abatements that you already uh, you already have that one. Okay. Uh, I think one of the things we've been talking about is. Uh, transparency in the police contract. Okay. That's something we've been really pushing for. I think we need to make sure that folks are feeling safe and protected. And mm-hmm. for communities like mine, mm-hmm. it's not that we're anti-police, but we realize that um, when things happen in our community, it's not always clear mm-hmm. on um, the outcomes of that. Mm-hmm. So I would never vote for uh, expanding what we currently like to stop and frisk and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff that uh, really uh, disenfranchise my community. Um, mm-hmm. So I would never vote for expansion of things like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Got and it. that's a hard stance. Yep. Yep. Okay. Got it. So um, here, let's, let's shift on to, um, you know, good government issues of, of sorts. As, you know, 70 has been around for an awful long time. We've done some work in Philadelphia. We've done some work in Harrisburg. Um, and, you know, our, our kind of traditional issues are elections and voting. Ethics redistricting is a big one right now. Um, as far as like what we can control in city hall, because of mm-hmm. course, like there's, there's a lot of work in Harrisburg that's actually happening right, right now mm-hmm. around redistricting, around election reforms, because that's where that law uh, sits. Um, but in, in, in city hall, um, within that general scope of good government, how our politics and how our governance works in making these decisions, making these policy choices, um, what would be some things that if, if you don't have a, a position firmly in support uh, right now that you would you know, talk about or, or that, you think, that you think council members should be talking about and, and, and others? Um have a couple, um, since I'm in the midst of running this campaign, Um, campaign finance laws is something that Mm -hmm. definitely has came up Mm -hmm. um, to the top of the radar because it's really hard for working class folks to run a campaign Mm -hmm. based on how the current laws are set up. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's kind of, we're kind of disenfranchised from the beginning, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, kind of set behind Mm -hmm. um, from the beginning when Mm -hmm. it comes to raising money to fund campaigns, Mm -hmm. as opposed to folks that are more, you know, 
economically astute. Mm -hmm. um, another thing you mentioned in it, I just, it just slipped my mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's re redistricting term limits has been brought up the past couple of years. All sorts of, all sorts of I do not plan on being a lifetime city council member like mm -hmm. that's not what I see. I believe mm -hmm. that uh, we've seen folks get very comfortable mm -hmm. in that position. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there should mm -hmm. be term limits. I haven't mm -hmm. come up with exact how many, like more mm -hmm. than three mm -hmm. is it's a bit much. I mm -hmm. do think that uh, we need to continue to have fresh blood in city council, folks mm -hmm. with new ideas mm -hmm. um, and more mm -hmm. in touch with the the generations to come. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something I definitely would stand mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you said 70 has like generally been in support of term limits as well. I'll, you know, acknowledge it is, it's kind of a blunt instrument. Mm -hmm. um, and, in a, you know, I get, I think a, uh, another universe where we have, you know, a, a lot of competition in our primaries and our elections and there, and there's just kind of like a natural turnover in, in whatever body we're talking about, whether it's city council or the, or the general assembly, um, then we wouldn't need such a thing. But what are some, what are some other obstacles? I mean, you just mentioned campaign finance and how it's particularly difficult for like a grassroots and an insurgent campaign, perhaps like mm -hmm. to, to raise money. What have been some other obstacles you, you kind of found in, uh, in putting the campaign together and, uh, uh, and making, making a run? Um, I think running as a third party was definitely a sure. challenge. Um, we're doing something that, um, it hasn't been successfully done. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of getting the education piece on what it is. So mm -hmm. like, no, we're not trying to kick the Democrats out. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I think this campaign has been really good because Republicans mm -hmm. traditionally has not had the run for their seats. Mm -hmm. They kind of like defaulted. Mm -hmm. So, you know, stirring up the conversation and making voters uh, or encouraging voters to vote your issues. Mm -hmm. Really go and uh, learn about the candidates that you're voting for. Mm -hmm. You know, we have historically, and I found as I go around talking to people around the city, people are used to just voting straight ticket. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes it hard for new folks to, we said, you talked about that mm -hmm. new blood circling and mm -hmm. it's hard when people are trained to just vote straight ticket. Like it's important mm -hmm. for us to um, find out about the po people that we're voting for, whether mm -hmm. it's ex city council, whether mm -hmm. it's our judges, mm -hmm. whether it's um, our state local, local uh, state elected mm -hmm. officials, mm -hmm. all these things are important. And I mm -hmm. think that this campaign mm -hmm. um, is pushing folks to investigate and find out like, why are they running? Like, what is this working family strategy mm -hmm. about? What does it mean we don't have to have Republicans? And I think mm -hmm. that's exciting to most people because mm -hmm. we've never been in a position to have to have that conversation in mm -hmm. this way. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that uh, that that that's better for Philadelphia politics, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. for folks to be just more informed, mm -hmm. more informed voters, you know, result in more inf more informed outcomes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're doing, informing yeah. voters. Yeah. Yeah. So let me, you know, I, I'm just going to back up just for a couple of minutes because I, I, I want to come back to the question of campaign finance you just raised um, and how maybe it's, it's particularly challenging for, a, for a, a grassroots new campaign to, to, work, to work through those rules. Um, do you have any ideas as, as to specifics as to what we, what we would change that would make things, make things better, uh, generally, generally speaking, um, for a newer campaign like yours? Like what's, what have been some specific challenges you, you faced? Oh, wow. Wow. Um... It wasn't clear, like just okay. just trying to figure out how do you do this. Yeah, just because there are a lot of rules and they're complicated. Yeah, or not clearly stated mm -hmm. or misinterpreted when you go and ask questions. Like we we had a lot of questions in the beginning, um, and still had to go back to the board. So I don't know if this stuff is like clearly mm -hmm. spelled out somewhere. It's mm -hmm. you have to hire a lawyer to help you understand these things, which is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. if when you're a new campaign and you're new to politics in this way, mm -hmm. um, the investments beforehand. Mm -hmm can become very costly. Yeah, yeah. So th something that's come up the past uh, a year or two um, is, is the idea of, of public financing of elections. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the idea that if you're a Philadelphia resident um, and, and, and voter, you'd be, you'd be eligible to, you know, make a small dollar donation, let's call it $25 to mm -hmm. a campaign, uh, and there'd be some sort of match by the government. Let's call it like four to one match, five to one match. Uh, New York City has a system like this, as do a number of other other places. And the uh, the idea here is that uh, a campaign would be incentivized to seek out small dollar donations. Mm -hmm. um, any initial reactions on that kind of, pro that kind of proposal? I, I think, Just kind of initial discussion in, in the town. I mean, I think publicly financed campaigns would give folks the opportunity. I talked about the money beforehand just mm -hmm. to get it started. Mm -hmm. um, it's huge. Um, mm -hmm. And I this campaign was publicly funded. Like we mm -hmm. have a few large dollar campaigns, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. this was a people driven campaign. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we need to encourage more folks to campaign in that way. Mm -hmm. um, I know this is probably not the favorable uh, things of some traditional politicians, mm -hmm. but if we're talking about getting a new uh, form of politician, new blood in politics, we need to make sure that mm -hmm. uh, being a candidate is accessible 
Mm -hmm. to people across the board and public yeah. funded publicly funded uh, campaigns would be a way to do so. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we've got about a minute here. I'll, I'll give it to you uh, for our last day. What's your know, final pitch to the voters and how can they learn more about you uh, before Tuesday? Okay. November so uh, my website is Kendra for Philly. I'm Kendra for Philly on all social media strategies. My email address is Kendra for Philly .com. Um, and we, I'm a working, I'm a working parties, working families party candidate. I'm a longtime fighter for public education. I'm asking for your vote because Philadelphia deserves real change. And working families has working families candidate myself, Kendra Brooks, um, has the power to do so. So I'm asking for your support on November 5th. Look us up, look up, vote your issues. Uh, and remember, uh, two votes. We have five votes. We're asking for folks to vote for Working Families Party candidates, Kendra Brooks and Nicholas O'Rourke, any other candidates that you love, all Democrats will get in. No Democrats will be harmed in this election. Um, and that's what the message we need to let people know. All right, Kendra, thank, thank you. you so much for coming in. All right, signing up for now. Stay tuned in across the day. i uh, got a number of at-large council candidates coming through the office. Um, and to get ready for November, November uh, 5th, you also have uh, 70s nonpartisan resources available. 70.org is the, is the website. We would link to our ballot tool. We have extensive information, information about the offices and the ballot questions. The We Vote app uh, is your one-stop shop for all of our resources. Uh, if you just want to download, download that onto your phone. And we'll see you on Election Day. Thanks.